I did write a little thing. Did I tell you this? I like wrote something on a walk. I think I did. It was stupid. No. <laughs> Is it about county? Well, I was like, well, I was I was listening to all of these things and I, I started listening to like Goosebumps, the Fever Swamp episode, because that has like this slow draw, like creepy banjo thing. And I was like trying to mm-hmm. envision, I was like, maybe it's something in that vein. And I like just started humming things. This Bear with me, because the vision may not come through, honey. <laughs> Honestly, I have to ask you to close your eyes, because I'm not going to be able to do it and look at you. I'm closing. Okay. All right. I'm going to do it with complete seriousness. <laughs> so it's it's like, try to imagine a slow finger-picking, country-style, like, twang guitar, maybe a banjo. And maybe there's some, like, sound effects in the background, like some woodsy, swampy, like, cricket sounds, something that feels rural, right? So it starts off slow, kind of like a then the strumming comes in. And then a cackling woman's voice comes in and goes in the distance. <laughs> well, you can't trust county. And then a little <laughs> And then, and then just, like, and then just like a little like. <laughs> I wrote this on the street, and you say, and you say you're an audio hack. That was literally that was. I was. I'm. I'm enthralled. Although I do have to request that Christina Aguilera record the banjo sound effect because you were just giving me Christina. You were like. I was trying to give effect. I was like, you know, people like add a little, I don't even know what that's called, but like, like movement to like a guitar string sound. I was like, how can I create that with my voice? What if it's just that audio snippet? What if it's just me going? (laughs) Well, I for sure thought you were going to say, and a cackling voice voiced by you in the background goes, I think I was you thinking of you county. I was I was like Stu could absolutely do this but I was like maybe we should hire like a haggardly woman like some voice actor because <laughs> I want it to sound real authentic just get me on a I don't know what day of the week am I most haggard but I could do it <laughs> it could be a Monday morning 6 a.m. your time <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no warm-up <laughs> done Oh, God, I made myself start sweating doing that. That was nerve-wracking because I, in my mind, it sounds so clear. But I'm also like, ah, could be that. Could be a million other things. So many ideas. I know. I know. It, that's I do love that. Because um, there's something kind of like swampy and like. Yeah, it's like it, it places well, it, like, you. it harkens to our early episodes, I feel like. Our earlier oh. episodes were very like lots of backwoods unsolved like that kind of vibe very rural totally Um, yeah yeah that must have been the inception of like where we started talking about county yeah county baby county it just had to have like some word in there i was like i don't know if it needs lyrics or i don't know if it just needs a spoken word or like an audio clip i was like but it needs something because there's like something in every jingle that's just like fun to say yeah wait what did you say last time you were like we should do the um, like one of the classic jingles, we should just like steal the whole thing, like call one eight hundred Stanley or something like that. Or- <laughs> <laughs> no, I said we should just steal creep, oh, just get oh, ourselves oh, okay. sued <laughs> and steal. I just the creep. Maybe if we just do a, can we do it? No, I think I, we looked this up because I was hound and chat gpt and bard ai and i was like I know, what are the what are the legal parameters <laughs> up around this i was like what if it's just Stu and i go like singing a little acapella <laughs> yeah <sighs> but it runs into like issues I mean, with like live I, performance I, I, stuff I it's a big problem Ugh. i know i just think that song is so iconic and like instantly recognizable that like even without the lyrics you could just do like dun, dun, dun. even Banjo picking of it would be sick. Just like. We will get our asses sued to the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Silas and Stu appear in court this week. (laughs) 
facing Tom York for <laughs> the rights to his song Creep. I'll tell you what, when can we you do imagine us <laughs> when we do a live in show with Tom York. Yes, I can. Absolutely. I could imagine us coming up with <laughs> wild testimony too. We'll call in creepers as witnesses <laughs> who can vouch for our character. <laughs> But when we do a live show, we sh- we'll do a little cover of Creep. I think we can do that. Legally, I think oh we can God, do that and nobody to. will like hold our throats. <laughs> yeah, that would be like a talent show. I think I had a dream about our a live show that we did. I, I had wild <gasps> dreams last night, but I think for a part of it, I, I dreamt that we had a, a live show, but it was very... It was very like vaudeville review, like not at all <laughs> what I imagined in my mind because I thought, you know, it's a podcast show. Like you come out and like... It's a mix of like comedy and podcasting. It's a live show, right? Some stand up maybe. But in this, we like came out in like, like, it was just like you had a feather boa on and I was dressed like I was at a chorus. <laughs> like we did a musical number <laughs> and the whole audience was just like expecting the podcast. So they were like, what, what is this? Who? And, and half of them had never seen you before. So they were like, who's that? <laughs> I just do a full strip tease, just like full burlesque. Full Dita Von Tees up there. <laughs> oh my God. I love Dita Von Tees. I swear. I, I do would, too. If I, I think that she's fabulous. I think that like actually the art of like old school burlesque mm-hmm. and like strip tease is like so beautiful. Yeah. She, she went on tour and I almost got tickets. It was really expensive. <gasps> I think she has a Vegas show too. Oh, I should have got those tickets. Dang it. Baby, there's. I gotta go. I'll, we'll go the second time. I know. We'll be trust and believe. Second time around. We'll be back. Um. Oh my god, I'm excited for doing this though. Wait. Oh my god. I was there something too. else I wanted to tell you? I'm trying to think. I feel like I had something else I wanted. Well, now that we've covered the intro song, the possible intro song, <laughs> is there anything else? I guess not. Maybe I should just shift us in because we've got a lot to get through in our season recap episode. Oh, I'm so excited. Wait, I do have to show you something. Please do. I thought I would <gasps> pop the bubbly that you sent me. I thought you already week. drank it. Oh, yay. <laughs> no, You're honey, gonna, I'm waiting for the right moment. You're going to pop it on the on mic? <laughs> I'm going to pop it on mic. <laughs> it just takes pop your own eye mic. out. <laughs> <laughs> Literally shows up with one eye to Vegas. Oh, that stuff is so good, though. My eye goes to Zach Bagans. That's what that's what it is. We'll sell it to I him. donate it. Absolutely. Oh we need God. the marketing money. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if I can do this. Is, is the cage on? Oh my God. <gasps> hey. <laughs> to a season, season well one. done. Oh my God. Season one, Aww. she is done. Also, oh my gosh. the reception I I to the last pour episode. You this too. Oh, thank! I've got some lemon water. Don't you worry, baby. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. I'm hydrating and I'm healthy. Um, everybody loved the John Benet Ramsey episode. Which, by the way, everybody, welcome back to Creep Time, the podcast. Silas Eden and Stu here for the season recap. Thank you to everybody for Hi, listening everybody. to the finale. It was so good. I honestly had the best time going through that case with you. Like. I just, I felt like, okay, well, first of all, Creepers, Silas texted me and said, how is this longer than Oppenheimer? <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, that was the cut down. <laughs> that was like the edited version that's, was over three hours. <laughs> that's ridiculous. This was a Christopher Nolan produced episode. <laughs> um, so, yeah, every thank you for just sitting through all of that with me. Like it, because it's so dark like i know that we said how dark and heavy it was but like to go through all of that and then finally be able to like bounce ideas off with somebody after like doing that research yeah it just kind of like helped me actually get out of it a little bit because i think i was texting you like i was so deep for the <laughs> like previous week just and it's like so dark that i definitely was having like <laughs> dreams and stuff you know like it's yeah. just one of those cases um you were but sending yeah, me was... videos of you on the train and you you were like doing research and you're like watching old interviews with the parents. <laughs> Just I, in public. Honestly, <laughs> I thought that people in public probably thought I was like nuts because I'm like sitting there just pouring over like Jean Benet stuff. They were probably like, is she like 
like working on the case. Oh, but- <laughs> Is she like just obsessed with it? Like that's like sick. 30 years after the fact. I mean, yeah, it was, it's very possible. But yeah, I've never really thought about that. If anybody were to sometimes I think about that when I'm doing research and I'm like, God, I hope nobody like ever sees my search history. And it's like looking at autopsy records and like trying to piece together. I know. I'm like, if someone was buried, how quickly would they decompose? Like, I hope no one sees my search results. (laughs) (laughs) But it's all for the podcast. Amazon Fresh. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Remember when I tried to I tried to read you my my Google search history live on the pod and I quickly rescinded (laughs) that option. I was like, maybe this will be fun. And I was shocked. I was like, if he's about to do this for real, for real. I just don't think I might. We might lose people. No, I I was like, I just don't think I don't think there was anything like too wretched in there. But I was quickly corrected by myself quickly. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Speaking of something that's not wretched, Mm -hmm. I wish so badly. I don't think I have had like rosé champagne like this. I cannot remember the last time. It's it's like heavenly. It's so I I had it at a restaurant like maybe a month ago. Literally that exact type, which is why I got you this because it. Um, oh my god! I was out with somebody and it, I did not pay for it, but I was like, oh, this is so divine. I'm so happy you like it. You're so sweet. Oh my god! I just wish I was sharing it with you. It's. I promise you, I'm gonna crack open a, a, some other high noon I have wedged in the back of my <laughs> fridge. I think I've got some room temp tequila somewhere. <laughs> I think your high noons went to the grave during the last episode. Four of them. Four of them over the course of like three, four hours that we were chatting. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I have. I have. I know we were like voice memoing about it over the weekend, too. But I, it's still sitting with me. Like, you watched the Lifetime movie. Um, uh, immediately after. I Well, because it's. I found yeah. a super HD vert. I, the first one I looked up on YouTube, I was like, I don't remember the quality being six pixels total like i don't remember it being this bad so then i i did some scouring i was able to find like a really hd version and really the only interesting part of the movie that i was like about was kind of the actual like unfolding of the day which i feel like they did really well the acting is a bit it's challenging the acting is challenging (laughs) which speaking of challenging acting I, i don't mean to pivot but just for a quick second and just like that, just got Please. renewed for a third season. And the last episode is quite challenging in terms of acting, I would say. The last one that we saw. Okay, so was the last one that I just watched, I don't want to spoil it for the Creepers, but I'll say Miranda goes to a show and she has to leave that show. Is that the last episode? That oh, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, not when I say the okay. acting is challenging, trust and believe I am never talking about Miss Cynthia Nixon. Ever because Miss oh, Cynthia yeah, yeah. Nixon turns it. No, <laughs> no she turns she it. always does. On honestly, like oh, she does. I mean, it's really none of the women that I have like an issue with in terms of acting. It's I have issues with the writing. Although I will say, now that Aiden is back in the picture, some some tough acting, some hard acting, hard acting to watch. <laughs> there were some choices. There were some choices, <laughs> or a lack made. thereof, a lack thereof. Yeah. <laughs> And and you know what? I still love his character, which might just be a testament to how great the writing was on the original. Like it's untouchable. It truly is untouchable. Untouchable. Yeah. You know what's crazy? I I don't know if you got this cuz you're a, you have Max obviously if you're watching and just like mm-hmm. that. Did you get the survey they sent out? I didn't. They selected me and I'm I'm assuming like a handful of other people. <laughs> And it was all about Sex in the City and just like that. Basically, they were trying to do like a massive like field test and be like, what is not working about the series? They were like, are you just tuning in for this show? What can we like trying to like poll people like, what can we do to make this right? And they were like, what did you like about the original? Like they just the execs cannot figure it out. They can't figure out what's not working about the show. And yet everybody's watching it because whether you like it or you hate it you're like still watching it because you want sex in the city that's what you want i mean i sort of think it's i sort of feel like so you've got a the love that everybody has for the original so Mm -hmm. it's like any any time you get to like dip your toe back into something you love it's like kind of like 
going back to like, you know, like an ex an ex or something. Like there's something Revisiting exciting history. and riveting yeah. about that. Yeah. And then I think that with this, it's just, it's so, the writing is so unaware of itself. Like how do they not know that it sounds ridiculous at some point? So it's almost like you can't not watch it. You, you don't know what yeah. they're going to say next. You, well, that's the thing. You, it's like you're watching it in hope that like every week it's going to get a little bit better. And they've had some moments where I'm like, oh, okay, we're like going in the right direction. But you're totally right. The writing is ludicrous, which is crazy because they have so much money behind the show. I'm like, what's what's up? Like, what's going <laughs> I need to be in the room. And be like, what's going on? But it sounds like it was written by AI. Like, the, the script that's is so funny. Rid, it's ridiculously boring and silly and they've also lost touch with new york like new york was always the fifth character of the friend group and now it's like an inconvenient backdrop for all of these random things and like i just i also don't even know if i agree with like the like killing off big because big was kind of an instrumental part of like why carrie's character is like so flawed you know like it's Mm -hmm. They disrupted the function of the show too much. I'm pressed now. I'm upset. I'm upset. And just like that, it got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're renewed, honey. They're renewed for a third season. That's why I, I was like, we have to get it right. I need to be there. HBO, call us. <laughs> I think it, don't you think at this point, though, that if they got it right, it would just be like, I think they almost have to keep leaning into how bad it is <laughs> because. At this point, it, I think it's just, it's going to be a totally different show if the writing gets really good again. It's going to be, you're really going to have to remove, it's going to, season three would really have to remove itself from everything that just happened in season one and season two, which I don't know how you do that. It would. It's also, I mean, it's beyond some of the writing too. Some of it is like the choices that are made on screen with like how people look and like how people are dressing. And I understand like the ridiculousness and like the camp of like, these women living this kind of fairy tale life in New York City, but some of it is just so it's just not working because it's like moved out of the way of like whimsical New York fashionista into like costume. And also when mm-hmm. Aiden reemerged looking like Mike Myers, enough was enough. <laughs> he was so <laughs> scary looking. Why did they make him look like that? <laughs> he she looks like Mike Myers. <laughs> With in like a straight jacket, with his hair combed back like that, I was like, "This is not, this is not what I." Are you talking about that first for. outfit that he came out in? Yes, yes. When Carrie like literally, I just t- thought he looked like he was going off to war. Oh my god! Yeah, like old school, like nineteen eighteen, like <laughs> World War One. Oh my god! I literally was half expecting him to be like, "I am fifty eight, going on fifty nine. Like it's, he it's was the hair like, too. <laughs> it's the hair. Yeah, that weird like comb yeah. back box dyed mullet like well, they've got budget why are we what are we up to it's also not aided I guess they wanted i know he's like I know. A, he's like I a guess... furniture man he's a woodsman i i don't know i do i again i do love carrie and aiden together so i do love that they brought him back but i wanted him it's back also kind of yeah. like like expected you know so it's I don't know. You know who I want retribution for? I want Carrie to run into oh. Burger. I want Carrie to run I into knew Burger. You were say Burger. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Burger. And just crucify him on the street. Like, just yes. destroy oh, him. Oh, God. He was such an ass. <laughs> he just, Burger, like, rewatching the old series back, Burger sucks. Like, he just objectively sucks. <laughs> He's so insecure. I myself. I myself, and I know a lot of girls, like girlfriends of mine, have Mm -hmm. dated a burger or two. And oh, my Lord. Like when you, I think that's why, like watching, I know that friends of mine and like you just now, but like people have such a visceral reaction to burger because I think everybody's dated a burger. Yeah, he's for sure like an archetype. And like it just kept getting worse in the series. Like as if like burger could not improve upon his own disastrous self, it somehow gets worse Mm -hmm. even down to the post-it the post-it is vile it's vile remind me did he leave that on her what what did he do i think he left it on her laptop 
like literally. That's right. I like, was almost about her, to say her answering machine. Well, it, I mean, like might as well have been like the laptop is also like a feature just in the same way that like the other inanimate objects are like a feature of the show. Like the answering machine is a feature. The apartment is a feature. It's like a sacred thing, like her laptop. It kind of starts and ends every single episode. So for him to face it with his shitty post-it. Oh, damn. What time is it? Do I have to censor this? <laughs> Tw- <laughs> I don't know. Could this one be unedited? 21, 27. I'll, I'll mark it down. We'll, we'll see later, I suppose. But <laughs> couldn't hurt. <laughs> with that 21 I minutes in, I was like, can- they can handle it for sure. I, was, I know. I was like, they, should they we? Can handle- they could get a little... The recap could be a little naughty. Oh, a little shifty. A little shifty vibe. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, I, I know I got us off this track, but maybe I should get us back on. Should we bounce into some of our, our recap plans? Because we were going to go back and oh go gosh. through some of the questions that we have for each other. But also we asked some of the fans, some of the creepers, you guys to submit us questions. What's hot on the ticket and what you want to know? So maybe we should start with a fan question and then we should go back and forth with our questions and see if there's any crossover or just see what's what's up. But the first fan question I was going to ask you was, do you ever, okay, this is from Maria. Do you guys ever get nightmares or lose sleep from the cases that you cover? I'm going to let you answer that because I bombard you every week <laughs> with this. I would say... It's usually for me the ones that are unsolved, like the ones that I know really we have unanswered. Yes, I like I know I can remember very clearly having dreams about uh, Maura Murray. Um, <sighs> Miss Maura, I, I, uh, I definitely about had dreams case. about her. Wow, I know. Um, I definitely think I also had maybe not nightmares, but like in the middle of my day, like consciously thinking about and getting like anxiety about Missy Beavers, mm. like those earlier ones where we yeah. did like back to back kind of like unsolved cases of women getting killed. Um, it's a really brutal like, oh. era, <laughs> a very, very brutal yeah. era for us. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of others. Actually, you know, it was really weird. I, one that I did have that was not unsolved, um, or it is unsolved, but it wasn't like a murder thing. I had a really interesting dream, and I don't remember what the context of it was really, but that it was D.B. Cooper related. Like I was on a plane. There was a hijacking. Were you a stewardess? Some guy Were you a trying to get off the plane. I was a passenger. Oh, I see. This is interesting. Um, did you see it through to the end to like when he jumped out, or were you just like, oh my God, and then you woke up? No. <laughs> I was just, it was more, I was sitting on the plane. I knew that there were like rumblings of somebody that was trying to like get out of the plane. Hijack. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got plans. And hi, and I, I, and I honestly wonder, now it's been so long, I can't remember if it was after Malaysia episode because we did those back to back. But maybe oh, yeah. I was like we did do combining that. the two. It's just a lot of like head, plane horror. Yeah. Did you see the thing I sent you about the Malaysian airline? I have to look up and fact check this, so please nobody hold me to this if this is faux. But I sent you a voice memo because, or I thought I sent you a voice memo. There was like additional radar footage that was released about the Malaysian Airlines flight that actually showed the plane quick, like just before it disappeared. And it shows three unidentified objects circling the plane before it kind of lips off the radar i do not know i have not fact checked this but i saw this video and people were talking about it and i was like uh we might have to revisit the case (laughs) we might have to look this up again and you think that that would have been kind of related to those last couple theories that where you said that it could have been like government hijacking it to take it down because of the cargo or yeah i think that's the thought i mean most people were saying this looks like ufos or it looks like something like yeah something very like science fictiony but um i think other than that yeah maybe like taken down by the government i have no idea if this is verified or not though i am i could be running my mouth spreading misinformation (laughs) oh speaking of misinformation uncensored app (laughs) this is an uncensored app i Speaking of misinformation, I want to correct something I said last episode where I said Speed was Sandra Bullock's first movie. That is absolutely not true. She was a working actress in film (laughs) about 10 years prior to that. So I lied. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love how we're like, we will spread misinformation that could land people in jail, but Sandra Bullock's career, we got to get that straight. No, 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 no. We got to be fact checked on that. I will not stand. <laughs> I will not stand. Not for that. I like, I listened back to it and then I, I checked myself like through Wikipedia. Also not a reliable place to check things, but I was like, oh, no, no, no. I've got to correct that. I've got to get back on and give a formal apology to everybody. For what I said. I w- you literally get canceled because you try to end her career. You defame her career. I would never. I okay. Would. I'm curious about you though. Cause I know that you obviously like, I know you're recording TikToks and stuff oh, like God, yeah. at all hours covering this stuff. <laughs> so has it almost become like second nature to you that you now can just kind of like go to sleep or like what keeps you up if there are certain types of stories like which ones keep you up it's a good question i i think in the beginning it was really hard and i wasn't able to separate it very well and i definitely had trouble sleeping i would say i don't usually have dreams about the things that we research oddly enough i've had dreams about cases that we haven't covered you and i um I did have a dream a while ago about room 1046 and (gasps) that one messed me up a little bit, just a little bit. And I'm also going to be in Kansas city next month, the end of next month. So are you going to go to the hotel? No, I'm not because I'm going to be with Bryce and Bryce doesn't like this stuff. So I can't be like, Hey, do you want to go to the hotel president, which is now a Hilton and like, (laughs) ask if we can go up to this room. Where someone was like bludgeoned to death, he won't go for it. Unfortunately, do you remember what happened in the dream? I think it was just exactly as I described it. Because I, when I tell these stories, it's pretty visual for me, and like when I hear them, it's pretty visual. So I think I was, I was the maid, or I was somebody who was going into the dark room, and then just looking over my shoulder and just seeing Roland T. Owen sitting <sighs> on the bed in the dark, and his, something about his face and the silhouette of him is very very unnerving to me so that's probably the one i think i've dreamt about the most or at least i've seen in my head as clearly Mm -hmm. i don't know i hope i don't start dreaming about these i hope i had such a like vivid memory of us recording that specific episode Mm. because i was trying to think to myself like where was i when we were because at the beginning i feel like you know, I was recording at my office sometimes or recording on the couch. And now I've got like this set up here, but you got a like, boom, I remember very, a boom. Sp- I got a, I got a real, a real mic y'all. But like <laughs> when I was sitting out on the couch, I remember us sitting there or me sitting there. And that was that episode where we really developed a theory that was pretty plausible. We, re- we like, really Whoa. did. Yeah. We got very close. I would say. Or something like clicked for both of us. I, I feel like we both felt that at the same time where we're like, mm-hmm. wait a second. The thing we just said out loud sounds like the most logical. And it was like a, yeah, oh shit moment. Yeah. 2917. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can just, we'll just mark them because I do like the sensor button just for the effect. So I'm like, oh, we'll, we'll see later. We'll, we'll decide. <laughs> um, should I toss it to another fan question? Do you want another one? Yeah, let's do another fan question. Okay, these are fun. Um, well, this one's a quick one. So Paul is asking, Hi, Paul, um, when we're going to be back from the season finale, episode 50, and the season recap. So I guess we can say that we're going to take a one-week hiatus. <laughs> so do not fret. We're not going to be on hiatus for like half a year and then bounce back. But we're going to be on our trip in Vegas and whatnot. So then after about a week, we're going to pop back and we're going to have a killer episode 51. I just don't know what that episode's going to be yet. Or maybe should it be a big one? Kind of like we did episode 50. Like, should we also do a high profile case? It's up to you. And by you, she means the creepers. creepers. I was going to say, I was like, creepers. Yeah. Creepers. Let us know down below, like what you want episode 51 to be when we bounce back. But Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be juicy. Maybe we should harken back to like some of our our old episodes and like the style of um, doing un, like really like proper unsolved rural backwoods. I like that. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. That would feel oddly cozy. <laughs> home base. Home base. Home base for sure. Mm. 
That was a quick one, though. I should give you another fan question. Let's see. Okay. Um, Priyanka is asking, what is next for us after podcasts? Would you ever consider a TV show, web series, or doing movies? Well, when Stu and I make our way to the Warner lot, we fully <laughs> expect <laughs> for a tour, by the way. <laughs> We would be sick as a TV show, would we not be? Well, first, Priyanka, you better call my boss because I'm still in a nine to five. So. <laughs> you better, you better get the deal right. Um, I, you know what I think would be really fun, but I know I would be dragging your ass as if it was like kind of ghost. Uh, ghost hunter style, like us going on location places. That's exactly and, what I was and imagining. Seeing it, yeah, um, and exploring it. But I know you'd be shit in a brick. Thirty one fifty six. Well, <laughs> honestly, I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> like, honestly, forget it. <laughs> Thirty one minutes and up, like fuck it. <laughs> Thirty two oh nine. <laughs> No, that'd be so fun. Okay, us on the Travel Channel. Imagine it. What is the what does the actual show look like? So each episode starts with a different haunted location. So I guess it's or is it haunted? Maybe it's not even just paranormal. Maybe it's also like the scene of major true crime locations, like famous ones. Well, it could be really cool. Is like if someday we went back and we kind of chronologically went with our episodes and we went to the sites of oh that would be sick the cases we covered i've want okay this sounds strange but i've wanted and i had this loose idea in my mind of i really want to see a doc about the brandon swanson case and yes i would love to be on foot as strange as that sounds in that location like in that field off of that highway that was um minnesota yeah minnesota i think Brandon Swanson was the one that ran, like, they think he ran across into, like, a field. He, so, I know it's it's tricky because there's, like, Brandon Swanson, Brandon Lawson, um, a lot of, like, B names. Okay. But Brandon Swanson was the 19-year-old who was on the phone with his parents. And he was walking That's towards right. a light. And then 40-some-odd minutes into the call, he just goes, oh, shit. And he was never seen again. I really think that is a story that needs more coverage all around and just I want to see a doc on it. So I've been loosely thinking about like trying to get a doc commissioned and maybe like I could executive produce it. But if that were the case, we would obviously be going to Minnesota to see that. Wait, what if you had a docu-series where it was like... Not even so much like ghost hunter theme where it's like we're going there and we're going to explore. It's more like for somebody that maybe doesn't listen to the podcast, like you can take them because you have like, you know, a mm -hmm. little bit of an expertise on the case, like take them through, interview people, like honestly, do totally. your local. Local lore. I yeah, know you love lore. talking to locals. Yeah. And like local lore could be a, it could be a sick docu-series on unsolved cases around the country and like getting locals take on it. It would be really interesting to do an interview with three different subsets of a community for each of these cases. So if we were able to interview County police and if we were also. <laughs> 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 well, it was so funny because in my head, I was thinking to myself, the best part about the docuseries will be that you'll have to put a disclaimer at the end of every episode. That's like, County police refused to cooperate with <laughs> Silas <laughs> Dean because <laughs> none of them would talk to you. Attempts were made to contact County. Unfortunately, <laughs> those attempts and requests for communication were left unanswered. <laughs> no, but I like that idea, especially for local lore, because that's the whole sentiment of it, right? Like, there's always three versions, what County tells, what the locals tell, and then what the news tells. So if we were to interview locally, like County police who worked on the case, locals who were there around the time of the case, and then some of the journalists who covered the case, I just flipped you off. I was like, <laughs> I just flipped you off. You just counted like um, Germans count. They go like that. Did I? Really? I go yeah, county. I was European like, county, thing. 
<laughs> I was like, locals, and then the journal, the press. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> then you just gave me the bird. <laughs> oh. I like that, though. I think that would be our TV show. That's really cool. Because yeah. if we were doing movies, uh, just too, too unhinged, too no. Or th- although, I can see us like pivoting into like horror movies, for sure. You'd be screaming. I would have a, bl- well, I would have a blast like directing or doing some sort of like production stuff on a horror movie with you. I think we could like, that would be really fun to to just make it as like <laughs> make all of our uh, experience from like what we know about true horror and yeah. crime use that and fuel it into like directing and production like i think that would be really cool seriously no i think you're right we kind of have like a, a decent sense of like not even just like the jump out scary like jump scare horror but i think we have a sense of what is truly eerie you know like even the, even the things you can't see in the unanswered questions, like what makes you feel unsettled as an audience member, because mm-hmm. we just do it every week where we unsettle ourselves. We just do. You, do you know what made me hella unsettled? What today that meme you posted of Barbie and Hereditary? Sinister, <laughs> sinister. <laughs> that was sinister. And if that's the kind of movie producer you would be, I'm all about it. I thought. Okay, maybe it's like too dark of um, a brand of humor, but I thought people would find that funnier and be like messaging me about it. Not a single person. <laughs> Nobody messaged me. <laughs> nobody really? was like, LOL. Everybody was just, nobody even like gave a heart. They were just like, oh, oh God. <laughs> I mean, listen, my <sighs> dream would be to to work with somebody at like a 24 or just watch them make a horror movie because their horror movies are so scary. <laughs> they've, they've got it. I think they, um, they're developing one from a TikToker, actually not me, but he's a, uh, say you baby. He does like horror shorts on back rooms, which is kind of like liminal space themed and it's really unnerving, but Oh God, a 24, they were like, we're very interested in like these short stories and like the lore that you've built around this. We'd love to develop like a script, like a, a feature script and it's happening. They got him in like a million dollar deal. I love it. That's insane. That's really cool though for that creator. I know all in due time, baby. <laughs> maybe mm-hmm. I, should I give you one of them? Um, well, maybe we should do some of our questions. Hold on. You pick, you pick actually. Yeah. You want me to, yeah. okay, let me see. You pick them. I'll do one of mine to you. Um, I'm sweating like a pig, girl. Like Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am so curious to know. I want you to rank your favorite type of case to cover on the pod Oof. from least favorite to favorite. Because I, I know you love them all, but mm-hmm. like the ones that you really are like, okay, I'm going to s- just, I'm so obsessed with covering this case to like, you could kind of, you know, it's not your favorite. So, Okay. Unsolved, survival stories, Ooh, paranormal, okay. true crime, like true, true crime, mm-hmm. or conspiracies. Those are the five. Hmm. Okay. So, okay. Oh, this so number is tough. five yeah. being the least. Yeah, think about it. I think for unsolved. number five, yeah, I would say conspiracies for number five, for sure. Beca- okay. Only because I, I always, first of all, we have to like approach them with like a sense of like this could or could not be true so the the factor of like doubt makes it not as exciting for me but i still love doing conspiracies and then i would say maybe paranormal but just because we haven't covered it enough maybe mm-hmm. it's probably four and then i think ugh, it sounds sad to say but survival stories would be next for sure um did you hear that dog in the background? Did you hear that? <laughs> it, it said, I listened to Tika Adams. I don't know about you. <laughs> they were like, clearly, <laughs> you guys have no reference for the Ellen Halbert story. And that's fine. Bunch of hacks. But <laughs> um, I think survival stories and then true crime. And then, you know, number one for me is hmm. unsolved. Unsolved or disappearances. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. eat that shit up. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. What about you? 
I think I'm going to have to say, okay, you're saying like if I had to cover all these or if I'm listening to them. Ooh, from, for you know? both, for both. I want I want okay, to hear okay. if it's different for both. I think I'm exactly with you on your rating if I were to cover it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as listening, I would say... Hmm. Have I ever done a conspiracy or paranormal episode with you? You have because you did. You did. Actually, oh, Nahani Valley. Nahani Valley. I guess is paranormal. Yeah. yeah. Nahani was paranormal. Amityville is sort of paranormal too. Oh so. yeah, that was a good episode. Damn. Yeah, that was that was really good. The so it's pig so head. It's like the pig's the pig head. head. <laughs> I can't. Oh my that was god. So that's like in my top five moments of this entire podcast of how foul that is. I listened back to that and scared myself. I scared I myself. Take a step. <laughs> oh my god i feel like the pigs had made i'm sure it made creepers sick to their stomach like that's just an undeniable just sickly foul image somebody wrote in the comments they were like i had to pull the car over I had to pull the car over <laughs> on the side of the road girl me too and i don't have one here <laughs> <laughs> um okay i would say listening to you tell me mm -hmm. i'm gonna say Paranormal might be my, like, the least engaged for myself because I'm such a, like, you know how we've talked about, like, the, the I always try to find the logistics behind it or the practicality. I think mm -hmm. with paranormal, I find myself, like, really needing to push myself into believing. Mm -hmm. So I think that takes me out of it just slightly. So that's more of a me thing. Um, but I would this say sounds like a challenge for then, me. This sounds like something I'm going to have to work on. Yes. To yes. really freak you out with a good paranormal story. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I would. I mean, but listen, I watched all the paranormal activities. Like, I love all of it. So <laughs> I'm just thinking as a listener, the ones where I know I'm super engaged would probably go paranormal. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably conspiracies. Mm-hmm. And then true crime, survival, and unsolved. Really? You love a good survival story? I don't know if I love them, but I'm hella engaged. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are by far the most engaging, for sure. Yeah. Oh. They're super scary. We'll have to. I've got a ton of them. We'll have to pepper more of those in. That's fun. Hold up. I have something. <clears throat> I'm about to die. <coughs> Help me. <laughs> <laughs> survive <laughs> survive the irony of me just choking to death where i'm like i'd love a good survival story <laughs> please um I wait wish i could give you a sippage of this to clear your throat I, I was like don't rub it in i was like i'll be fine with my lemon I water <laughs> i was like i was gonna say this is not fair i should have not opened this i'm living vicariously it looks divine okay wait can i give you another fan question Sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I wanted to, let me skip to this one because this one looked really cute. Um, this is from Master15920. Master. Less of a question, more of a request. Let Stu lead more. She is an amazing woman and we love her. And I love her too. I wanted oh, to just throw so that sweet. one. Isn't that cute? That was on oh Insta. Oh my God. That's really, really sweet. Holy sh Holy shit. <laughs> 44, 23. That is really, really sweet. I love the creepers. Isn't that cute? But seriously, it's so cute. But I think <laughs> creepers need to know how. I, I know I've told you this both times I've led. It is absolutely amazing and remarkable that you are able to do this each and every week. Because when I... I know that you're just as like thorough about and like the quality of it. Like you have such a high standard, which is why I really try to turn it out because I want to make sure that I meet your quality standards. I don't know how you do it every week. Like truly honest to God. Oh my God. Obviously you're my friend and I love you, but like the research you do, the storytelling, like it's just, I love to lead every now and then, but I much I'd rather leave it to the pro, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you're pretty much a pro. To, first of all, you do copious amounts of research for the two times that you have led, and I would I would argue you're just as engaging of a storyteller. I really would. I also Wait, I like you your delivery less, too. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, because you're very like, I, I feel like we're a good yin yang because when you deliver it, it really, everything sounds completely factual. You deliver it so like firm in the way that you're telling the story where like, these are the facts. Whereas I, I feel like I sometimes I'm getting into the territory of like, welcome to my campfire kind of thing where I'm telling a story. So I love it when you, when you lead. I love it. Well, I think that's what most people want. They want to feel like they're around a campfire. I know I've told you this, but I feel like sometimes when I lead, I enter into like corporate presentation mode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, next slide. Like, <laughs> so, I appreciate you saying that, but it always, it's, it's once you and I kind of like start to discuss it together mm-hmm. that I get, I loosen up a little bit and I like allow myself to be a little bit more of a storyteller with you. I feel I agree. I feel like it it also got better with time for me. Like in the first few episodes, it was to, it was really nerve wracking for me because like it's so daunting all the research that's in front of you and you just like mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't matter how much you prep because like I would like proofread everything and then like after I think episode like ten or fifteen, I was like, baby, I'm cold reading. It's <laughs> <was> like <laughs> I wrote this. I was like, but I haven't touched it in like three weeks. It was like I hope I. And sometimes I'll make like a lot of spelling mistakes. So I'm in real time fixing my spelling mistakes and my grammar as I'm reading it. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> the train is just moving. <laughs> or I, you know what I'll do? I'll I'll use this device a lot where like I'll really have like completely botched the grammar of a like a paragraph. And I'll be like, I've got to like proofread this and like figure it out. So I'll toss you a question. And I'm like, well, how do you feel about that? It's just let you stall for me for a little bit. So I'm like, okay, then she went up the stairs or down the stairs. Like I'm like figuring it out in real time. Well, no one would ever be able to tell, but two, can now they I tell will. the creepers? <laughs> well, one of my favorite things ever about recording with you is that um, whenever, most of the time when I hop on, you're already on like prepping. I usually get on and I hear you like going over the research and you're like, <laughs> and i'm like baby or i have you muted by accident and you're like sitting there for five minutes that happened during carl tanzler do you remember that yes oh my god oh my god carl tanzler i haven't thought about that name carl tanzler (laughs) oh my god it's good we don't think about that but when we first came onto that i had my sound off on my computer and i was going over research and i was like necrophilia is defined as I, was, I, was like, ne- I just kept going i was like necrophilia necrophilia and, and you were sitting there like um hello baby hello i was like silas and you were like necrophilia necrophilia oh my god i was like i'm gonna go swiffer wet jet for a hot minute and then he comes you're like let me go make a latte and i'll, I'll bounce back when he's yeah. he's good <laughs> i don't even know how i discovered that i think i i like Five or like 10 minutes had passed and I like turned up the volume of my computer and I just heard you breathing and I was like hello <laughs> hello <laughs> no idea oh my lord um should I bounce it back to you for another fan question or should I ask you another yeah, fan question? yeah yeah what do you want do you want me to uh, uh, let me ask you a question how about that um okay let's see <sighs> I am hydrating. I am hydrating. Hydrate, baby. Okay. <clears throat> if one of the cases that you covered could see it solve, <sighs> which one would satisfy you the most? Oof. Oh, God. Is it corny to say Champenay? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, it, it, like, it just... Well, oh, God. that's a really hard question, actually, because my my instinct was Champenay just because it is so so famous and like it's i've known about it and it, i've followed it for so many years but if i exclude john benet of everything we've covered oh my god mara murray that's that's one of them for me for sure i i think i just i want to know what happened that night i i'm still i'm freaked out by the thought of like her last few hours and i'm okay and the one thing that really freaks me out about that case, if you remember the voicemail, I think it was a voicemail or the call that she got, her boy or her boyfriend got. Do you remember that? 
Yes. It was like the following day, like he called her or like left a voicemail or something. And it was just the sound of her like whimpering on the phone. <sighs> what was that? Or, oh my God, or or Brian Schaefer. What the heck? Where did he go? There are so many. What What is oh it for you? Oh my God. <laughs> Brian Schaefer would be one of mine for sure because. I gotta know. I, I have just, to know. I, I feel like Brian Schaefer and <laughs> the John Bonet case have the same feeling where it's like one thing. We know that one thing that we like think is true, which is mm-hmm. that he couldn't have left that house. I mean, uh, left that bar. The ugly tuna saloon. Oh my God. The ugly, the ugly tuna. tuna saloon. Like, we know that that's not true, right? And then it's like with Jean Bonnet, well, the parents couldn't have done it. That's so foul, right? Like, it's like that feeling of. Yeah. Like, one thing cancels another like, thing out is the problem. Yeah. I gotta yeah. pull, let me pull up our episodes actually, because now I feel like there's a there's a whole bunch that I'm probably forgetting. I mean, we we could honestly say like any of the cases that we've we've covered, but oh, you know one that bothered me. Um, yeah, was it? Uh, oh God, what was her name? She got like decapitated on the highway. <gasps> Julia Davis. Julia Davis. Yeah. Oh, Julia Davis. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I would agree to that, too. Some of these I don't even remember. Oh, my gosh. I guess the Jameson family is up there. Um, I was like, I covered the Dardeen family. I don't even remember that. This is like, I'm looking at all of, like, the premium episodes, too. I don't too. remember that. Okay. <laughs> You're like, the Dardeen family. <laughs> that is it. We should cover that one. That is a dark story. And so confusing and senseless and unsolved. Um, Timothy Pitson forgot about that as well. Oh my god, that one really, that one actually um came back to me a little bit covering John Bonet. What? 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 I see. It Asia face. Degree. Asia oh. Degree. What the hell happened to Asia Degree? What is that your number was- one? Is your number one John Bonet, or is your number one also Mara Marie? Asia Degree really stuck with me. That was one of the episodes that I had known that like I thought and thought and thought about after we did it. Um I think I think we have to negate John Bonet. Mm-hmm. Like that cannot be an answer to this question because we just covered it. Of course, we're gonna like really want the solve. A little bias. I would say Asia Degree is up there for me. Um and I think Missy Beavers. I want to know who's in oh that costume. God. I just got chills with you saying that because I wasn't even thinking about Missy Beavers for whatever reason. But yeah, I want to know too. I mean, mm-hmm. I have my I have my opinions, but I, mm-hmm. I want to know for sure. How do we still not know? The more modern cases that we still don't have answers for, like I, I don't get that. Like, what's mm-hmm. what's up? What's what are we missing? I feel like it's just resources. I think it's literally there are there is so much crime that's happened more often over the last 10 years and 20 years that cases from years and years and years ago they just suffer because resources are having to be used for stuff that's happening like right now. Right. It's just kind of crazy to think about that like that's how so many of these people get away with stuff. It's just because time elapses and resources get used up. And it's just like. No, that makes it's it's, crazy. It makes sense. It's like at the mercy of um, like public pressure always, which is I mean, I yeah. know we always say this, but that's why it's important that we keep like resurrecting cases that people haven't touched in like 10 years, 15 years, because a lot of these I feel like are modern enough and there's enough evidence that it's within the realm of possibility to assume they could be solved, especially a case like Missy Beavers, where we literally have video footage of the murder. That's, that should be solved. And the weapon, right? Didn't they have the weapon? I don't remember, actually. I think they did. Did they leave the weapon? 
for some reason, I feel like I remember you saying they left the weapon behind. But oh, it was just like, I, yeah, I remember what was murky about that. It's because when they released any of the press around it, they wouldn't say what the murder weapon was, but it's suspected that it was a right. hammer. Yeah, because they were trying to like conceal information so that the suspect didn't know how much of um the suspect didn't know how much of that information was out. But oh my god, that car. Okay, so remember that video. At the, I think it was like a sports store that was down the street where like yes. a car showed up in the rain and like it was too blurry to identify. Somebody reached out. I think it was either on Insta or maybe it was Facebook. Um, in like they DM'd and they were like, hey, just so you know, like I work around cars a lot or I think like I work at a dealership. Like I'm really good at identifying cars, like even when it's very blurry. And they like named that car. They're like, I'm 95% sure it's like, I forgot what they said, but they were like, it's like a 2011 Acura or something. And I was like, oh, God, it's that weird feeling of like, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer to yeah. it, you know? Oh, my God. I know. We've had some we've had some crazy DMs where like people have a little too much information. <laughs> they have information that maybe the police should know and we shouldn't. Yeah, I feel like you've told me a handful of times people will reach out to you mm either live their local lore style or mm-hmm. know people that knew the victim or whatever and try to give you like backstory. And it's like, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. But you never know if it's interesting. Credible. Right. That they, that, that, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's what a lot of Reddit is. It's like local people that get on and tell their own story or these Facebook groups or whatever. But I have had a renaissance with Reddit for that reason. Cause I just, I love reading I local lore, I guess that's what it is. But like, I love reading user theories about things just for like an alternate way of thinking about something or an alternate like POV of the evidence. That's what I love Reddit for. Mm-hmm. Also, if there are any Reddit totally. users who are creepers, please feel free to mention creep time every which way on Reddit because that's how <laughs> I discover like 90% of my podcasts. Yeah. Chat about us, talk about us, toss us around. Should I give you another? question from a fan yeah. <clears throat> yeah let's see hmm. oh this is from sam bumby they asked what were the scariest movies that you watched as kids i can only imagine you two have seen terrifying flicks <laughs> what are you saying <laughs> what, but what are you trying to say you trying to say something was wrong with us yeah. since childhood because so, <laughs> you're right they were, um. they were like it definitely started in childhood <laughs> What's yours? Um, I want to know. Well, I will say I've always had an interest in mystery. I mean, like my mm-hmm. parents used to buy me Nancy Grace. Uh, Nancy Grace. You? Nancy Drew oh my books. god, you have done that before. <laughs> the opposite. When you were talking, <laughs> you were talking about oh Nancy god. Grace, and oh you were god, like Nancy Drew. <laughs> Nancy Drew. <laughs> I. That's so funny. I actually. Well. This is not, I, I have a horror movie answer, but mm-hmm. I will say my first thing that I really, really remember doing and being like, oh my gosh, I want to be a detective someday, was sitting at my like little like 96 PC computer and playing Nancy mm. Drew video games. Did you ever play the computer games? For Nancy Drew? No. Oh my, Creepers. I played the board game played. Clue because I was born in 1930. Yes. So. <laughs> well, I also, Clue was my like cult classic movie. I literally. Me too. I would love Clue. Watch that on repeat. We should watch that this week. We really should. That's such a great. Oh, why does that never get played at like movie nights? Oh my. I, lo- I also love the ending where like they go through every alternate like version of how yes. it could have, um, like who killed. Who dies in It's Yvette and the singing telegram. There's a number of murders, right? Well, there's the three options, which is, which this was the greatest thing is that when, okay, I could talk about Clue forever because I <laughs> loved it so much. It's too. so good. So when you have it on uh, DVD, yes, it I remember pauses, it. it pauses when the power gets shut out. And like, you remember when, uh, Tim Curry's character goes and shuts power off. That's when the DVD decides when you're going to get which ending you get. I love that. I do remember so, this. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll like start like it'll pause and you could hear the DVD goes and it'll pause wherever <laughs> it's supposed to go. I swear. And it's either Miss Scarlet, Mrs. White or um, 
a bunch of them killed yeah. one or the other. Mrs. White was the one with the short black bob, right? Flames. Yeah, I, I felt f- flames on the. I I hated her. <laughs> I hated Devet so much. It 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 flames. Yeah, that's the best it's line. So good. Um, Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum. Ugh, who's so good? Tim Curry is great in that too. Mister Body, he's so fantastic. Or he's Wadsworth. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh God, no! I loved that game growing up, but. Oh, so you God. were interested in mystery, but did you have any scary movies that you saw? What was the first scary movie you remembered seeing? <sighs> Miss Nancy Drew. I'm going to start calling you that. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Nancy I... Stu. <laughs> Nancy Stu. Oh, my God. Creepers, please Honestly. let that live on. Nancy Stu. Nancy Stu. <laughs> Lord. Oh, my Lord. Um... I definitely, it, this was not my first horror movie, but I will tell you that one of the memories I had of being truly horrified was I came in, I was way, way, way too young to have seen what I, how much of this movie that I saw, but how my old older brother say? was we watching. Like seven, eight? I nine, think ten? I was about eight. Eight, okay. eight years okay. old. You're young. And my brother was watching Misery. <laughs> The Stephen King movie. My brother had this habit of watching horror movies, and then he would be like, sit here and watch it with me because I think he was A, scared, but B, let me scare my little sister. So it like oh, detracts yeah. from, you know, me being scared. But I have a very clear memory of seeing Misery. And such I have an a iconic very movie. Clear, it's so good. Iconic. Oh my God. Stephen King is such a genius. I mean, truly. Um, and then he used to make me watch Final Destination movies with him. Those are wild. I wish they kept making those. They're ter- those are actually scary. In a way, in a different okay, so kind of way. Th- I got to toss it to you after I say this because I cannot go down this rabbit hole or I'll really have nightmares. But again, my older brother would torture me. We would sit in his room and on the special features of the Final Destination DVD, the OG, the special feature is a death date predictor i hate that's such an early 2000s like (laughs) enough is enough a death date predictor that would send me into a spiral (laughs) it was awful my brother would be like do you want to see what date you're gonna die and like would literally and so i'd be like uh i guess and we'd like sit there and do the death date predictor and it'd be like it probably was like on you know january 5th 2014 you will die from right they're, they're like you're not making cliff, it past you know? like 15 yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's so oh that's so cruel i in the spirit of big brother little sister energy i do have something foul to share with you do you know about oh my this god, oh my god go, what, go. I, what i did to mel mel gibson my sister mel um <laughs> <laughs> uh do you remember the ring by any chance you watch a video that vi- everybody knows the ring. You watch the video and then you get a call that says you're going to die in seven days and then you die. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. you could play the video because like the video was uploaded to YouTube. And my sister was probably, I would say, seven, meaning I was too old to be pulling this. And this was evil. This was evil. And I played the video for her, which she did not believe, but she knew the lore of it. Like you watch this video, then you get a call that you're going to die in seven days. This is why I should not have had a cell phone in middle school because I certainly <laughs> used that cell phone to star 69 and call our house phone <gasps> immediately after she watched the video. The way she had a full psychotic break and started screaming and instant tears. <sighs> trauma. Tra- sibling trauma. She And she hugged me. She was so scared. I hate that that I did that to her. <laughs> That's so mean. She really, really believed. She was like, I just watched this video and I'm about to get a call. I'm, I'm getting the die. call. I'm going to die. I've got a week left to live. She was sobbing. Was so mean. <laughs> and that is why we need to produce horror films together. Because <laughs> you are already creating the world. 
oh, you were story building. I, I definitely I had to break it because she was really upset and I like I think I didn't want to get in trouble. And I, I guess I was young enough where like oh. my brain wasn't fully developed. So I was just doing something vicious. But it was bad. It was bad. I, f- I forgot what the original question was. <laughs> what were we even talking about? It was you, was that your first <laughs> horror movie? No. Um I this is probably gonna explain a lot, but I saw horror movies very very young like i want to say like six seven um we didn't have like a very censored house uh like i saw the shining when i was like maybe six <laughs> so you can, okay you can imagine what that does to a child's forming brain <laughs> well clearly because you and i both had a stephen king moment that's oh, why God. we're here i guess yeah i used to watch um does anybody remember creep show i don't know if any of the creepers would know this definitely not gen z but um Creepshow was Stephen King, but it was like a mo- two movies. It was Creepshow 1, Creepshow 2, and they were like mini stories of like scary, scary stories he had written. And I used to watch that religiously. It was so, it was very, can- that's for Creepshow, baby. <laughs> Honestly, why is that okay. not our theme song? I was just going to say, that's our theme song. <laughs> that is our theme song. <laughs> But I want it to still be Christina Aguilera. I just want her to be like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> maybe I could try it with AI. <laughs> I can see. I can see yes. what we can do. Yes. Hey. <laughs> I guess it was The Shining. That must have been. Also, do you remember Goat, the movie Ghost Ship? Did you ever see that? How did you talk about this? Oh, Ghost Ship. It's it's this like really stupid like. To mid 2000s horror movie but the opening is like the sickest opening ever because it takes place it's a haunted ship right but like they give you like the um, uh what's it called when they give you like the exposition it's like the story before the story why am i blanking on this the, like pro- the prologue? prologue yeah it's a prologue where it's like a dance is happening on this ship and i forget like what year it's supposed to be but it's like the 50s and like it's all adults on the ship but there's one little girl She's the only child on the ship. So she's very lonely and kind of sad. And there's an accident where like a wire snaps on the ship and it like cuts through the dance floor and everyone is severed in half except <gasps> except for this little girl because she's the shortest person on the ship. So she survives and everyone around her falls apart in half. It's the most grisly opening 10 minutes, but it's That's like so grotesque. I know. So like and the captain was there because it was like a full like crew and like passenger dance. So everyone dies. So she is just left alone on this giant ship. That's like the morbid inception of the story. And I, I remember watching that and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like that messed me up. I was like eight and I was like, this is too much. Let's, let's put insane. Hocus Pocus back on. Yeah, yeah. That I just visualize that and I am like sick to my stomach. I'm gonna send it to you. <laughs> Best believe I'm gonna Please send do. it to you. It's I mean, it's kind of sickening. Like when you see it, you're like, and like it, they don't die instantly too, which is the worst part about it. They're like severed in half and they're like trying to reassemble their bodies to their legs. It's so foul. That's so gross. Oh my god. So uh, who is that person who asked that? Sam, Sam Bumby. That's that on that. <laughs> That's that on that. <laughs> That's that on that. <laughs> Period. Um, wait, can I ask you one more? Please. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We have so I'm many questions curious. on here. I feel bad. I feel like I know, we have to I get know. through the fan questions for sure, just because I, I feel we bad do, if we, we left do. anybody Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Okay. Well, do a, do a fan question because I'm looking at mine wait, and I'm at... like I want the next one to be really good. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh. Well, I guess Emma Kittle. Uh, we already kind of asked this question, or Sue did, because it was like, "What's your favorite type of episode to cover?" And I guess we both agreed that like unsolved for sure um what's another one uh which case has kept you both up at night the most have we i feel like we already kind of answered that didn't we yeah i mean for me i think it's still like missy beavers maura murray aisha decree aisha yeah i think room 1046 Um. has still like has still has yeah, a grip on me. That one is really, yeah. Especially like when I'm in a dark room, like trying to go to sleep at night. And the first thing you think about is like Roland T. Owen in that dark room. It's, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. 
Who asked that? Sorry, did I, I even give the name? I will say... Um, it was Kimbo. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. Sorry. It was Kendra. Oh, my God, it was Kendra. We love oh, Kendra. Kendra. Oh, our girl... Ke- it's our girl Kendra. It's our girl Kendra. I will I will say, even though it was solved, um, Idaho murders were so... I mean, that really what a was like wild in time that was. my yeah. brain. That was crazy. Those, like, three weeks... Where, like, we didn't know anything. The first, like, three weeks when it broke, it was such a sinister vibe all the time. Mm-hmm. Every day just felt off and bad. It really did. I think, um, wait, do we have any other? Hold on. Let me get through one more fan question, because this is a story one. This is from Kimbo, since I mentioned Kimbo before. Um they asked if we could both share a paranormal or a true crime story that has happened to us. Unless you've you've got a murder that I don't know about, Stu, <laughs> please feel free to share a paranormal story. Oh, jeez. Um, okay, I'll say this was my very first inkling that maybe there was another, like, world or like kind of dimension i guess Mm -hmm. um that could be considered paranormal so creepers i think i've probably deduced by now that like you and i grew up doing theater and we always i think when we were on tour together like some of the fun was that we went to all these different theaters and it was like each theater has its own vibe and its own like history Cause it's like, you're imagining everybody that's performed there or passed yeah. through there, whether like dead or alive and whatever. So I think that our, uh, natural like inclination to be interested in like the world of paranormal, probably for me, it, it was certainly born somewhere in the theater. Like that was, that kind of lived in the same space for me. So I think mm-hmm. my very first moment. I grew up doing shows in an old theater in North Carolina. That is literally what the Ford's theater in DC was the same architect. It's the same kind of vibe. So very old school, very historic growing up doing theater there. There were like, you know, all these different stories about the different ghosts that haunted it and whatever. And, um, At the time, I remember being like a little girl and then, you know, everybody would like as kids pass around the stories that they would hear from the adults. So like, you know, that if you look up in the in the the gallery was what the like the catwalk up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, like the the house of the house. Yes. Of the house. And they don't sell seats up there anymore because it's like not really safe to sit up there. Oh, I thought it was going to be like, because it's reserved. Because it's reserved. No. Well. Well, they used to say that there was a whole section of seats reserved for this one ghost and whatever. So there was that ghost. Then there was a ghost that I know, so spooky. But as a kid, you're like, oh, my God, this is so neat. Like, I'm running around this place and there's these spooky things. There was another ghost um, where supposedly she was an actress. And if you were in a quick change, all of a sudden you might feel your dresser zip you up or button you up and then you turn around there's no dresser but you're magically in your costume i love a productive ghost i love a ghost that goes to work uh, me too she's <laughs> still working <laughs> she's, she's had a wardrobe baby she's had a wardrobe absolutely <laughs> um so that was kind of my first and there was like one incident when i was in a production of cinderella and the smoke alarm went off and the like the rumor between all the kids that were in the production was like, oh, it was, I forget the ghost's name now, but it was like, you know, the ghost of so-and-so that sits in seat D14 or whatever, you know, like Ooh, he pulled the I love smoke it. alarm, you know, stuff like that. But that was really my first. What about you? Um, I'll have to think about, well, I have a couple, but I was going to, what I thought you were going to get onto because you were talking about tour. Do you remember that place that we stopped? I think it was a church that we performed or it was a theater that was attached to a church and I, I remember, like, the first thing you said when you came in, you were like, there's something here. There's a bad vibe. I don't, God, I don't it know where this is. But Kentucky. It, it That sounds right. It sounds like or Kentucky. Or West Virginia. It was Southern, I remember. West Virginia also sounds very right. I, I, for the life yeah. of me, I cannot 
I could not tell you where that was, but I do know that it was it was in a church or like our dressing room was like in a church or something. And it was also like a storage closet. It was really, really bad. I remember, but you you were just like bad vibes. There's bad vibes in here. I thought that's what you were going to talk about. I I want to say that was, wasn't it sort of, we walked in actually a pretty big stage, but then when you got to the back where the dressing rooms were, it was like very dingy, but like white and like, I don't really remember the just, stage very much, actually. I, I remember the load-in was terrible. I remember that. Be- I remember. Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was a horrible load-in. Um, God, I would do anything if I could find, like, our old schedule. Because I, I, like, want to... I want to make a little, like, map of... Like, a road map of, like, where we were at, like, what times. <laughs> we'll track that down with Laura or something. <laughs> be like, hey. I think I have it. Do you? I was like I scouring I, my email and I couldn't find it I think it I still have it in my Gmail. Yeah. Baby, if you could just forward that right over I'll, to... You know I will. <laughs> Silas Dean. <Tic-tac. laughs> I'm not going to get my email. Um, yeah, as far as paranormal stories for me, I feel like I must have told some of the juicy ones on here, but the scariest one I can think of is that one that happened to my brother. The one where he started screaming. Do you remember that? No. We were like, so my grandma, this was up, we were at my grandma's place and my dad was there. And this is not an old home. I don't think, I think it was made in like 2003. But we have always, and to this day, have like a kind of a weird feeling in there all the time. Like we don't know very much about the people who lived there before. Um, My grandfather did pass in that home, but we don't think this was related. But I just remember we were there in like the TV room and I, I remember telling you this, like when you're sitting in the TV room, you can, it's kind of like your eyes, if you turn to the left are like a straight shot down the foyer and the foyer kind of leads, if you turn to the right, to the living room, but we don't really go in the living room because there's like no TV in there and it's like night and like, why would you be hanging in there? My brother's watching TV and he just starts screaming and he was insistent that he saw a man in the house. And he said it was an old man with long white hair, a full white suit, and a top hat peering from around the corner from the living room, looking at him, smiling. And he said it was so vivid that he didn't he didn't think it was a ghost. He thought there was someone in the house. And oh he was, God. oh my God, this was so, it, it's just like, you know when your sibling screams in a way that you haven't heard before and something is mm-hmm. really wrong? that panic that you start to feel in your chest. Like, I just remember he was going crazy and like my grandma was like holding him and my dad came in and they were trying to get him to calm down because he like couldn't even speak. He was so scared. And then when he said there's somebody in the house, like my dad just starts charging. I don't even remember like what happened after if we called the police, but I know we looked everywhere and there was nothing in the house. And my brother won't talk about it to this day. (laughs) <laughs> it's just a very freaky story that we think about like all the time like it's carry because we were young when this happened but he was old enough that like his eyes weren't playing tricks on him that is right. one of the even though it didn't happen to me it's one of the freakiest paranormal experiences i can think of because it was so specific that i was just gonna say that like that's an image that i feel like is very hard to just come up with in the moment and get yourself that freaked out about, you know? Yeah. And he's like, he's like kind of a quiet person and was a quiet kid. Like he's not one who's going to like have a theatrical episode like you and I would, where we're like, I saw something like he, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, he was screaming. Like he was scared and he doesn't get like that. So that made it all the more credible for me where I was like, he just saw some shit. Like he just saw something in this house. And we had to sleep there that night. It was so bad. I think he left. I think he had to go home. He was like, I can't be in here. He was like, I'm checking into the Ritz as an eight-year-old. Yeah, eight years old. He was like, <laughs> oh, you can see me at the Holiday Inn by tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. That's so scary. You know what I crave sometimes? And my brain must have been warped from tour. Sometimes I crave like... A La Quinta? No, not a La Quinta, but in that vein. <laughs> <laughs> not like a hotel, per se. I just crave like hotel, like morning coffee and breakfast. I love like coming down from a hotel room to a breakfast, a continental breakfast. I love that. I would have loved it more if our options weren't cranberry juice and a hard boiled egg in a plastic bag. (laughs) 
<laughs> Do you remember the the steamed biscuits we would have? Steam. Yes. They, yes. Those were actually those were all right. <laughs> I know you love a biscuit, girl. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> you say, you're like, those Those I can stomach. They're fine. Um, there must have been other things that weren't so bad. I feel like there were, all, oh, the wa- there were always a waffle maker. Always a waffle maker. Right. Um, right. Some fresh fruit. Maybe. Maybe fresh. I don't know if it was fresh, but there was fruit. There was fruit, for sure. And usually some kind of a pastry. Like, I remember Danish's. Yes. Cheese Danish. Yes. We like would that. always grab stuff to go. Um, but you know what? I, I will say I do love, sometimes I love a cup of coffee at a hotel like that. That's in like one of those kind of styrofoam things. Sometimes it's just, you can't beat it. That's good coffee. I love coffee in transport, like coffee in transit. I just, I love like, yeah, I love the act of like, I went out today to Starbucks. I have a coffee maker. I make coffee here every day, but I chose to leave the house to go to Starbucks just because I wanted to hold a little sippy cup coffee. Like the fool that I am. I was like, I want that with my cold phone. It's an experience. It's a vibe. There is something so cozy though, about having a little like hotel travel cup with your little like stupid lid on it. And you're like, "Mm." and I love the act of opening. I sound so stupid. I'm like, I love the act of opening up my little creamers to pour, (laughs) to assemble my coffee. I mean, listen, coffee is a ritual for me, for sure. Every morning. I mean, it's it it's totally definitely is. a comfort thing. Do you drink your coffee black or do you drink it with cream? I usually have it with milk and like a Splenda. Really? A Splenda? Mm-hmm. How, how East Coast of you? I'm a Splenda girl. Very, very is Bostonian. East Coast? It's very Bostonian. Oh, wait, no. Okay, do they like Splenda or do they like equal? They like equal. <laughs> they like equals. Equal, yeah. I was going to say, don't say that because when I... Well, I, I always laugh. I know that we've laughed about this, but when we used to rehearse in Boston, that every morning I would basically go to a Duncan and mm, I was just so good. Am- well, first of all, I love Duncan, Me too. but I was amazed by the Duncan culture, which is very much husky, burly men coming in Construction at 6 a.m. Yeah. getting an XL iced coffee with, like, they'd be like, all right, uh, yeah, let me get a large iced coffee <laughs> with uh, five creams and 12 equals. And they're and dead serious, like, too. 12? Dead serious. And no one bats an eye. They're like caramel no drizzle, if you could do that on the top of the lid. <laughs> Seriously, that's what it was. No, like, the, and it's, the thing is, every morning, so true. it was out the door. Like, the lines yeah. were crazy for Dunkin' Donuts in Boston. And I'm like... You guys can't be for real. I like. I love. It Boston. is good coffee, though. I, it is good coffee. It's. I, I don't want to blow a brand deal for us, but like, it's better than know, Starbucks. Duncan, if you are listening, <laughs> our PO box. We is run on Duncan. Duncan. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's so good, but it just it absolutely. It was. It was one of those moments where. I was just like, okay, this is, it's such a hallmark of like the culture up here that Mm. to walk in and be like, this is how I want my Duncan. No one is going to say a word. They're just going to be like, yeah, like, of course we'll throw in 10 scoops of ice cream and a drizzle of chocolate swirl and two more equals on top. Like nobody cares. It's not hyperbolic. There's no fans to it. People are like, of course you want this because- yeah. This is the drink of choice. Like they're like, it's no question. I love that. Yeah, I do too. We weren't drinking Dunkin'. Well, I guess you were drinking Dunkin'. I feel like I was drinking that shitty cup like coffee at Upham's or whatever. At like the downstairs cafe. That like it was like bodega coffee. And it was like a buck. I just remember there was a Duncan. If I left my apartment early enough, I could run over to the Duncan and then still catch the train to get to Upham's. The, cha- the, cha- I, the Charlie. Oh wait, it. what was it called? The Charlie card was the card. What was the train yeah, called? Yeah, uh, I think it's just called the T. Right? The T. Yes. The T. Oh damn! I would have to get that from. I was kind of far from where we were at, but that place I was staying was so damn worth it. Oh my god, it was so yeah. worth it. Yes. I gotta get back there. I'm craving a. Rooftop. I know we should do a Boston for sure. If we do a creep time live show, we gotta go to Boston. I'm gonna bring us to Upham's. I'm going to set up a studio in Upham's. Stop. <laughs> no AC. <laughs> just like, no just AC. like we're in. Hell. We're used to it. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, we're conditioning ourselves. Um, can I ask you a question from one of these? Sure. Let's see. 
what would you say is our most common behind the scenes blooper on this podcast? Is it boring? <laughs> is it kind of just audio tech? I was going to say, it's maybe boring, but easily my audio setup. It's usually I <laughs> hop on. There's 8,000 things. We creepers, you have to understand Silas's patience with me. Nine times out of 10 when I'm hopping on, I am rushing home and like hop on and there's a bunch of stuff that I should know to press and I'll inevitably get on and be like, okay, I'm ready. And then Silas is like, Okay, you need to press this button. You need to do this. You need it. And I'm not a, I'm not a tech dum dum. But for some reason, with this, I just I can't get it right. There are a lot of steps. No, there's a. I will give it to you. There are a lot of steps. I I wish. I mean, it feels easier now. I feel like when we first started, not with the other mics, but like with this mic setup, it just felt like so much troubleshooting. But it in theory, it should feel as like good as like we hop on and we're there. You know? Yeah, yeah. It kind of feels like that now. I feel like most of our our bloopers have to do with like outside sounds that we can't control. Like I guess the ice cream truck is kind of like a feature now, but stuff like that right. where we're like, do you hear that child screaming in the street? Or like, did you just hear exactly. that? It was a car accident outside the window. <laughs> Dogs, garbage trucks, anything like that. Thunder. I liked the thunder. Yeah, I, I thought I was cool. I don't know if you like listen back to that episode. That was the um, the Zodiac Theories premium episode, but the, oh, thun- right. the thunder yeah. sounded sick in the background. Ugh. Also, shout out to the premium subs for Creep Time the podcast. I was just gonna say that they deserve a special shout out. For a sure. round of applause. Who have truly listened to every scrap of content we have ever made because <laughs> it's there. I feel like they deserve their own little, uh, I don't know, a name, a, a creeper a, a adjacent thing. I don't know. Did I tell, well, did I tell you my idea for this? I forgot if I told you this or if I dreamt it. Sometimes I think I, I've told you things, but I realize like I just had the idea to tell you, but I like mentally check yeah. it off. I'm like, well, I thought about <laughs> it, so it's done. But I was like, yeah. we should like go through because i have a a breakdown of all of the emails like in our analytics we get a breakdown of all the premium subs i'm like we should go in and at random pick one of the emails of a premium subscriber and we should give them a year subscription for free yeah oh i think that's brilliant and i I was like we can do it for like a really celebratory episode maybe if we get to like episode 60 or like the halfway mark for um season two uh, I think that'd be really fun if we could do something cool like that oh, for them. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Free premium for a year. I love it. <laughs> I just, I want to give them something. I'm, I also, oh, here's what I thought was corny about it. I was like, I love that idea. I was like, but we should send them something tangible too. And I was like, a <laughs> picture of Stu and I. <laughs> The thought of us sending out a signed photo is so funny and unwarranted. I was going to say, from what? Like, (laughs) we'll have to take. No, you know what it should be is like. So I, I think merch is all like well and good, Mm -hmm. but it'd be really cool for like premium subscribers to get like a special because we don't have merch yet. Really, like, do a special. I know limited thing of premium merch would be cool. We could. Well, I was when I was talking to Mil- I should say her name. When I was talking to someone at Spotify, <laughs> <laughs> she was I don't know if I can reveal this, so if, don't repeat this creepers, but um yeah. Uh Spotify is working on a, a system right now that's they're developing to basically be able to streamline merch sales like on the actual profile of the podcast. So in theory, the way it would work is that if you go to Creep Time, the podcast on Spotify, immediately under it, you would see like a calendar of all of our live dates. And then under that, you would see like a full digital shop with all of our merch, which you can buy right then and there. You would be able to buy tickets to our live shows right there. And I was like, oh, that's like brilliant. She's like, yep, pretty far away in the works in terms of um, development. But we're there. We're slugging. (laughs) (laughs) Because like it takes so people don't realize like for an infrastructure like a digital infrastructure as complex as Spotify that takes so much coding like so much oh coding God, to bake that in and you're like it should be so simple but we take it for granted like 
how intricate and complex a lot of these platforms are, but just know that that's in the pipeline. I love it. I love it too. What would our merch say? I mean, I've I've told you I think it should be the Zodiac symbol, but it says can't trust County. Like in a cipher. That's, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's so good. Did, I, did or, we get that written um, down somewhere? We need a joint Google Doc because I'm going to forget that. I know we do. We'll add it to this joint note. Um, but I'm really big on joint notes these days. I love share it because I shared our Vegas schedule with you and I was like, I just, cause you can update it in real time and it's like the same thing as a Google yeah. doc. I love and that. And you can get like a little no- notification that they changed it. It's like so fun. Yeah. And I like to, I see like a little bubble of like you in there. I'm like, Stu's looking at the note. She's reading. <laughs> She's reading. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> Wait, should I toss it back to you for another question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's okay, see. we burned okay. through all the fan ones because there were there were a bunch, but I wanted to select the ones that weren't like repeats. So thank you to the fans that did all the creepers that submitted questions. We're so so grateful that you did that because I know I posted asking for it like this afternoon. <laughs> Should have thought of that a little a little bit of time ago, but better late than never. Okay, let's see. Whew, I'm hot. Which... I'm burning. <laughs> I know. Um. Okay, if you had done the season finale, mm. do you know which case you would have picked to cover? Or is there a case that you think you would have wanted to cover for the season finale? Oh. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't think I thought about that. Honestly, one that I still want to cover, and just because I know I I would have gone to town with Nancy's voice, I would have wanted to do Casey Anthony. Oh, I I cannot. Please, that can we just say that that needs to be in season two? It's going to be in season two for sure. Okay, okay, for sure. Because like, I need your deep dive of that case. Because I have a, to tell it's you, a crazy I'm still case. very. I only really have the top line of it. Like, I never really followed it as heavily as most people do. Oh, when you get into, like, the initial investigation, like, how crazy it is, like, what Casey Anthony did. It's weird that everyone refers to the case as Casey Anthony because the victim is really the daughter, Kaylee. But she is just such an insidious person that Casey Anthony becomes the focal point. Like, how much she lied and, like, how obvious so much of it seemed. And yet, there is this this like missing link where like she really can't be convicted somehow she's out there yeah. living free i think i swear to god i read somewhere that she's working for like a private investigation team which is so crazy <laughs> that's as crazy as like brian koberger working as like an intern for the police station that would investigate the idaho murders well he was about to be Jeez. i know, I know. But it's like the same vibe. It's like the call is coming yeah. from inside the house kind of thing. Right, right. Okay, wait. I want to ask Wait, you which one, one wait, which one would co- you have wanted me to cover? Is there one that if you could have listened to it, what do you what would you have wanted to hear from me? I mean, I definitely think the season finale, I would have wanted it to be like a high profile case like that. Casey Anthony would have been perfect, honestly, because you had been teeing it up throughout the season mm. being like oh my god i can't wait to cover this with you someday um i know i still can't i don't know like maybe like john wayne G- oh night stalker would have been one i would have been like ah if you decided to do it if i did night stalk it would have been a five-hour episode we i <laughs> said yeah. we, we have to take a lunch break <laughs> like it would have been nuts yeah. that would yeah we should also cover that at some point because that is such have you watched the doc on netflix uh-uh Sue, it is, it is, I feel like I have a high ass standard for like true crime docs because there's a million and one of them, but like it is riveting. Like every step of the way, I feel like I'm there in the 80s in Los Angeles and it's so scary. It's so scary. Oh my God. For like three months, people in LA were just going to sleep every night being like, tonight could be the night that he comes in and he was, he, it didn't matter who you were. He was going after men women, children, the elderly, like he would just literally break in and just like brutally kill people in their sleep. And then he was like leaving symbols. He was like desecrating their homes and like, oh God, it was so scary. 
I want to ask you questions about it right now, but I literally just want to save it because I want to be so green when you tell that to me. I will spook you to hell when I tell you that story. I want to be spooked. (laughs) (laughs) That should also be a merch. I'm going to write that down right now. I want to be spooked. I want to be spooked. I want to be spooked. Spook me to hell. Spook me to hell, baby. Okay, let me look at another one of mine. Um, Okay, if we could go back Mm -hmm. and have Nancy Grace host an episode covering (sighs) one of our cases, which one would we choose? Oh, my God. Nancy would host? She would host one of the cases? Yeah. Yeah. Like, she would lead. (gasps) She would lead. Oh, God. I mean, I, I kind of don't want to... Okay, I'm going to put it aside, like, because I, I want to avoid selecting one that I just know for a fact, like, she knows a bunch about. But if there's one case I'd really like to hear her thoughts on, I think it would be... I'm interested to hear her thoughts on Missy Beavers, truly. Mm. And I also would love to hear what she thinks about Jalea Davis and those friends. I, cause I think she, because I want think about the thing about it is like, I have to give her a case that I know she wants to interrogate a lot of people and that there are a lot of places you can point. Cause I think that's what she likes. And for me, Jalea Davis and Missy Beavers are those cases. What about you? Mm-hmm. Mine's Debbie Collier. Oh my god, for what a deep cut. Forgot about that. Yeah. That was another one that really that just came to my mind that really but it's the same. I think what Nancy is so good at, like you're saying, it's the interrogation of who was close to the scene. Mm-hmm. Who who knew the most information? I think that's how she kind of has always like quote unquote solved most of her cases is mm-hmm. like she's gonna find the person that was last there or was closest to the victim so i would love her take on whether or not she thought the daughter was involved in the mom's death something about that case i would love her take it still does not sit right with me remember when she did a podcast Mm -hmm. the daughter did a podcast like i think a couple of weeks or something or maybe a week after the mother was found it was the whole thing doesn't sit right i listened to the whole thing you did i forgot about that wait Mm mm-hmm what, and it seemed it was it nutty. seemed off. It seemed crazy. It seemed she. Well, I think if I remember correctly, it was like her cousin is a true crime podcaster or something, and so oh, that, that's she what it only was. agreed to go on because it was a family. It was a relative that hosted it. Got it. And so I think, and I remember saying this because I wanted to be sensitive because I know that she is diagnosed bipolar, but she was just kind of like all over the map in that podcast episode. Mm -hmm. Like she'd be really, really upset. And then all of a sudden she'd be like, screw the police, screw this. Like there was not a lot of balance. There was not like to use your word you used recently, like decorum of like how you'd want to present yourself. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't have that. She was kind of unhinged is what I remember. To be fair, that kind of sounds like how we run this podcast. One second we're very upset. (laughs) And the next we're like, screw the police. County's corrupt. (laughs) Totally, totally. No, I I hear you though. Um, that was a that was also a really heavy case to throw s- to Scott because that was the first time Scott was a guest on the podcast. He yes. didn't know what the fuck was hitting him because he he just like <laughs> didn't know. He was blind and he was like, "Oh my god!" I know. I remember his little like reactions and him, him being like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, he he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't prepared for like any of the banter or like to like talk through the details of the case, like how we're trying we're like on the hunt to solve. He was like processing the horror of the case, and that case is horrifying. Wait, speaking of Scott, can I ask you one of my other questions? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I had another question, which was, um, wait, let me find. It. Oh. What was, I'm sure you have many, but like one of your favorite non, like a non-stew episode where there was a guest covering or whatever. There's a military plane that's flying over me right now. I don't know if you heard that. It's Scott. It's Scott Redman. It's Scott Redman. (laughs) It's Stevie Cooper. Um, Wait, sorry. What was the question? (laughs) It is like, what was your favorite or 
a, a favorite moment you had with a guest that came on like, mm. when I wasn't on the episode, like a special moment or like kind of a hilarious moment where someone like a Scott wasn't used to covering this. Like any, <laughs> any highlights for you? Um, I think that, well, there were a couple of times I had Jack on where I just feel like I really knocked him on his ass and like scared him. Um, because I, I think I've gotten pretty used to you because you can handle a lot. Like I can, th- I throw a lot your way and you definitely like it affects you, but I think you've got a, you've got a pretty thick skin. I take that for granted because sometimes when you bring a guest on, <laughs> they're not really prepared for <laughs> the atrocities I'm about to throw their way. So some of the moments I think I've thrown to Jack, have like really thrown him. But one of my ultimate fa- like favorite episodes with a guest was when I did the premium app, the Avril Lavigne conspiracy, because, you know, I, I can talk about that conspiracy to death. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I got inv- I went on that BBC podcast to talk about it. And I was like, where does that come out? I don't know. I forgot. I'm remembering it in real time right now. I'm like, I forgot I did that interview. <laughs> but th- like that, doing that podcast where I was, tr- my goal was to convince Jack of the conspiracy. I felt like I was killing it. I was like, I'm really convincing him because I felt like it was really compelling. So that was one of my favorite ones. What's a dream guest? That. Is there a guest that like you would love to have on? Like imaginary. Like let's say we could have anybody on in the world. Who would you love to have on? Okay. This is a weird take because she's not... <laughs> like true crime but she's a detective on a show i love mariska hargitay who from law and order oh oh, oh, okay okay gotcha like (laughs) you would have would you have the actress on or would you have her on as like the character as olivia no i i would like to have her on because i feel like as an actress because i feel like she played that character for so long that it's sort of like what you and I are getting to do where it's like, we start to think that we could solve these damn cases. It's like, if you, like yeah. reading about them. So I, I would be curious to ask her, like after playing that character for so long where you're the character's experiences are based off of, you know, like based on true events or based on real detective work, do you walk around your life feeling like you notice things now that are like off or like you see somebody on the street that you're like, they're in distress. I'd be so curious to ask her because I feel like since starting like doing this with you, I'm just more keen now when I'm walking around, I like see something that looks weird or I like notice someone that looks like they're upset. And I think about a case we've covered and I wonder if they're going through it. Like, Totally. And I, actually, I'm curious to ask you, like, how much it affects you in your day to day life. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like creepers probably feel that way as well, because that's how I feel as a listener to true crime podcasts. Like, creepers probably feel, I would assume, that just like you are just more keen overall, or like you've got a watchful eye. Uh, but I guess that, that's an interesting idea the idea that you could be on like a crime show for so long playing a character that you just, I don't know, develop a familiarity with like the vocab and like the process i guess kind of like if you're on gray's anatomy mm-hmm. for 20 years you're you're like a pseudo doctor you're at least like nurse level maybe <laughs> <laughs> like yeah um i definitely feel like it affects me for sure i feel like i i don't know if cynical is the right word but i feel like i'm i'm much more um watchful in a way that i distrust things even more than i did before like i I'm willing to believe that if something feels bad, it's bad. Like if Mm -hmm. my instincts are telling me that something about that relationship looks off or like, I think this person's about to do something, or I think this is an unsafe person to be around. I trust that immediately because I have so much in the back of my mind of like worst case scenario or like this case where this happened, or they were in this spot. Like I think about that all the time. I also think that I think about self-defense a lot and like what I would do in the event that I was attacked or, Oh my God, if somebody broke in, Oh my God, I'm going to knock on wood. I (laughs) I just knocked on my own wood. I think about that all the time. I have an escape plan in my apartment for like the hypothetical is if someone were to break in, which I don't think would ever happen again. I'm going to knock on wood again. (laughs) I'm so damn superstitious, but so am I, I, I know exactly my process of like, 
what I would do, the button I would press, my panic button, because I do have a panic button, like immediately do where I would Do you really? Get, by my bedside, honey. You think I can do Stop. all this every week and I don't have a panic button in my room? <laughs> Baby, I am Jodie Foster. I'm Fo- so I am glad to know that. Jodie Foster. Is it Jodie Foster who's in panic room? Yes. I'm yes. Jodie Foster. Be You'll be Stewart. Kristen <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a photo shoot concept for us for sure. <laughs> oh my god, a hundred percent. But I, I like I'm in the panic room. The intruders are inside, and like I've got enough supplies in there to last me the winter. Like I am prepared. The only thing I'm missing is a firearm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I first of all, I love that you have a panic button. That's the greatest thing ever. Okay. <laughs> Backup, thinking about like early exposure to horror. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. This just reminded me. We really, truly, from a young age, must have had some interest in like horror, crime, whatever. Kindred spirits. Because I used to, kindred spirits, baby. I used to build forts with my little brothers, and part of our fort would be a panic room. (laughs) (laughs) How did you even know what a panic room, like a bunker? Like, no, a literal, I remember we had this little, it was a Disney, like, themed tent. And so we'd build our fort, and then at the very back of the fort, we would put the tent, and we would have, like, part of the blanket drape over it. So, like, if you wanted to enter the panic room, so we would do this whole scenario in our heads where, like, someone's breaking in. So we'd run through our fort, and we'd, like, go into the panic room, which was this little, like, tent. My God. I'm just remembering that. That's a deep, that's like a core memory for me. I just remember. Who were the robbers? Your other brothers? Uh, people people we made up. Oh, we imaginary robbers. We would rob- watch Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, we would watch Scooby-Doo. We would bring in, we would build these forts in my, um, in our sunroom. So we would put, we had like a big dining room table. We would build a fort on either side of it. And then we would bring in we had one of those um tiny little tvs that had a built-in vhs thing so my mom would hook it up with an extension cord and we had uh scooby-doo on vhs and we would watch it in there and it was really fun (laughs) i love it oh my god you're you little you oh god i wish i knew you when you were young it's just it's so cute i just you and like all your brothers i love the idea forts with panic rooms (laughs) What kind of? Well, that's that's how you know it went too far. <laughs> <laughs> a panic room. That's good. I mm-hmm. I'm remembering this when I was. God, how old was I? This might have been like pre middle school. I threw a murder mystery party at my house. <gasps> I got the idea from Lizzie McGuire and watching Clue. So I decided to throw a themed murder mystery party, which I had my parents help organize. Where my friends came over dressed in like 1940s like regalia (laughs) like we had to hunt so and there was something a note was left in the kitchen that like i think my my mom played like the the victim and was like on the floor like i've been killed (laughs) like who did it and there were all these clues hidden around and I think we gape up on the murder mystery. <laughs> like nobody solved it. So I think at a certain point we just like packed packed it up and we were like, let's make cookies. Like we just pivoted the night. But we like we like went all out for it. A murder mystery party. We gave we're up. like eating Tostino's pizza rolls on the couch, and your mom like finally gets up and is like I she's I, just like she's I've like participating committed. the whole time. She's like, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I also helped like stow, stow the clues away, like <laughs> the murder mystery party. We did that. We also that's amazing. Oh, I wonder if we did anything else that was like sinister. We, I, I'm sure we did plenty of um creepy stuff. I went to Salem when I was a little kid. I like requested that as like that's a family vacation. List. Oh yeah, you've never been. Remember, Wait. we kind of we were gonna plan a trip. That was like yeah, a year and we or two ago. Do it. Why didn't we go? Yeah. Because I think it was COVID. I think we literally were planning to go and we like, no, I want to go. It's so fun. We should do that. We should should absolutely do that. Oh God, there's so many fun things. And it'd be fun to go back to Salem now as like an adult and actually go to like the bars and like check out the restaurant scene and the museums are, they're so fun. I think my sister went actually. I think she took a trip to Salem last year. She stole my idea. (laughs) 
<laughs> she's living my life. Pretty soon she's going to roll out a podcast too. Who knows? We need to have Mel be a guest on the podcast. She's asked to do it. She was like, I'll be a sub. And I'm like, you might have to be one of these days. <laughs> oh my God. I would love that. I honestly just want to... Uh, honestly, if there's a day where you need coverage and it's me and Mel, <laughs> that would be hilarious. And I can get her experience of when y'all did that drive in Kentucky because I'm still totally. fascinated well, by she, that. Well, she's an avid true crime listener, so she gets it. Like, she knows how to tell these stories. So I feel like she'd be really good at it, actually. She's a murderino. Mm. Mm. Love it. Should I ask you one more question then I should wrap us up for yeah. our season recap? This yeah, has been yeah, fun. Yeah. We did a little... I know this has been fun. Ooh, okay, let me go here. Stall for a second. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go through. Yeah. Baby, you gotta wrap us up because I gotta <laughs> pack for Vegas. You do have to pack for Vegas. I know. I'm like. I'm like barely packed. Like you know me. I'm like halfway. What time's your flight my tomorrow? It's laid out. It's at five, but I'm working a half day. Okay, bless you. Bless you. I know. Wait. So it's at five p.m. So you're gonna get in. I should get in like California time, like eight, I think. Oh, gotcha. okay. Gotcha. I'm so excited for you yeah. to go. I'm so excited. Oh my god. Are you gonna are you staying with uh you're gonna stay with them for a couple days? Mm-hmm. Fun. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Definitely try to get some rest on that flat. Yes. It's direct, I hope. <laughs> yes. Oh, by the only way know. the only way to go. Listen, no way we do the it. only way. I don't do a layovers over here. Come on. Uh-uh. Um yeah, that's gonna be so cool, so so cool. We should, and then I'm gonna, I'm running into your arms asap. <laughs> Please, oh my god, let me know if you guys do want to do Griffith on Friday, Creepers. If you happen to be oh at Griffith god. and you see us, oh my god, please bombard us, <laughs> hike, hike with us. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, which episode? This is a good one to close it out because it's positive. Which episode had had you laughing the hardest? Whether it was appropriate or inappropriate, because I know we do a lot of nervous and appropriate laughter as well. I mean, it's easily the Gilly Hicks episode for me. Gilly Hicks is (laughs) cackle. Was that the Flatwoods monster? I think it was. Either it, maybe it was. I want to say it was the rumors. Wasn't it the old people episode? Because I kept thinking to myself. Oh, yeah. It might have been the rumors. How ironic that we're talking about, like, we're talking about little kids, like, hearkening back to what we did as little kids. And we're we're on this episode about. I don't know how we got to that. Somebody said in the comments recently, they were like, they were like, y'all, the ADD was real bad on this episode. And every time I see it, I'm like, it can't be helped. (laughs) It just can't be helped. (laughs) I know. We are unmedicated and unhinged. That's right. But, we're, uh, but I think with that one, I think that when we were doing it, weren't we kind of like, well, I don't know. I thought for some reason that we were kind of like maybe not going to post it. Like we were just like talking about Gilly Hooks. And then you were like, no, I'm including it. And I was like, oh, Jesus. Well, we should say, yeah, for anybody who listens, they probably don't know that usually when we end the podcast – like when the recording stops, we keep talking for like a little bit. And like we for something about that, like decompresses everything. We're like the second we stop recording, we're like, oh, oh, my God. OK, so what do you really think happened? And I don't know why we do that, but it's like secret conversation. It like feels good to do. But that was an episode where like we just never hit pause on the recording. <laughs> It was the best, like like going back in time with you and I know. But Gilly Hicks literally sent me like I just absolutely still cannot believe that there was a shop dedicated to selling lingerie called Gilly Hicks. Gilly Hicks. Mine was the idea of the vintage thong. A vintage thong. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, that isn't that's an illegal thought. Like, if the thought police exist, that's something they should arrest you for <laughs> thinking about a vintage thong. <laughs> A broken on in Poshmark. thong on Poshmark. <laughs> it's so foul, it's so wretched. Well, get ready. I'm bringing you a five pack. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> Stu, I cannot thank you enough for joining me on oh our gosh. season recap. We have successfully completed fifty damn episodes of this podcast, and 
I I just I'll say I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be more excited. Season two is coming. Like I said, this episode will come out this Friday, and then we're gonna take a week off for our our Vegas festivities and the Magic Castle. Don't forget that. And by the time oh we come God. back the following week for the start, the premiere of season two, we're gonna have a lot to talk about. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Creepers, thank you again for like just going on this 50 episode ride with us. And obviously, Silas, I love you. Thanks for letting me I be a part of this. This has been a blast. And I can't wait to hug you in person. And like, I know. 24 ish plus hour plus hours. It'll be so great. We'll we'll give you a day to recover from the jet lag. We'll we'll let you <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'll give you one smoothie from Erwan and you'll be cured like that. Oh my god. One. I'll be Haley Bieber. That it's amazing. The second you sip it, you're Bella Hadid. Oh my god. Okay, Can last we... little thing. I don't mean to derail us again as yeah. we're wrapping up, but when we were up whitewater rafting, like going there, Bryce and I thought we saw Bella Hadid. <laughs> because we stopped at a Starbucks like off off somewhere and this girl got out of her SUV nice ass SUV and you know how some people just have like a look to them they look like influencers she looked of course. just like Bella Hadid she had the most cut <gasps> jawline I'd ever seen and I like joked and I was like oh my god I was like look, I was like look guys Bella Hadid to our, our right and then like, we were all like wait is that Bella Hadid <laughs> Like it looked just like her, just popping off into a Starbucks. It was definitely somebody. Like she was an influencer, but she wasn't Miss Hadid. I'm gonna manifest so we see Bella Hadid while I'm there. I'll be happy if we see. <laughs> Hopefully in Vegas. Yeah, if we see Yolanda, I'll be satisfied truly. Oh my god! Give me any of the Hadids, even Muhammad. <laughs> I'll take it. What's the brother's I'm name? There. I forgot. Uh, Anwar. Anwar. Of all, Give okay, me Anwar. One last manifestation before we close it out. If there yes, was yes. any housewife <gasps> that you could just bump into, it can't I'm be Erica Jane ask. because it's so she's already there. But any housewife you could bump into on the street in Vegas when we're there, who would it be? Because let's manifest it. <laughs> it's gonna be Brandy Glanville for me. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say it. <laughs> Oh, I feel like she'd be fun it's to run gonna into. gonna be Brandy. She'd be so fun. She'd be like, let's get dumb. Well, then <laughs> I could just be. We could ask her questions ridiculous. about Denise, too. We could ask for some. Exactly. I. Mm. Oh, God. Okay. Countess Luann, I think, would be amazing uh, <laughs> to run into. I don't know what she would be doing in Vegas. Wait. Okay. <laughs> This is how, you know, we've got to wrap this up because I will really go on a, off on a tangent. Did I ever tell you that when I first moved to D.C., there's a super famous restaurant here called La Diplomat? Like, it's like La the Diplomat. restaurant. It's the Le spot. Diplomat. Ooh, no. The restaurant. It's where politicians go. It's where, like, literally the first time I ever went there, Wolf Blitzer was sitting behind me. Like, it's like the place Ooh. to see and be seen. Also kind of touristy, but like one of those spots. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous French restaurant. Very classic. So when I first moved here, Luann was here, I think, doing one of her cabarets. She went to La Dip. That's La what they Dip. call it here. La Dip. <laughs> La Dip. La Dip. She apparently had a tab that was over six or seven hundred dollars. And just <laughs> Luann, if you ever hear this, which you won't, I love you, but you know, bear with me when I say this. She just Thought because of her status, it would be comped. So she essentially dined and dashed out of the tip, and it was all over the news. Oh my <laughs> god! But the audacity to walk in and just be like, "Yeah, obviously my dinner is comped," and she's literally sitting next to like the Obamas is just yeah. one of my favorite things. And I will stand Luann forever on that. I would expect nothing less from the Countess herself. Because you know what? Right? In my mind, her dinner was comped. The restaurant made exactly. the mistake. <laughs> that exactly. is nuts. I know. I thought you were going to say that you went to go see her cabaret. Would you go see her cabaret? Absolutely. Wait, you and I went to La Dip when you were here. Did we? After Jordan's show. That's La Dip. Yeah. Wait, why am I not remembering this? 
we went with um, Jordan, her boyfriend. That's legit. We saw her at John Proctor. That's legit. Oh, wait. Yeah. I, that place was so cute. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And she <laughs> that's where she went and she died and dashed. Damn, Luann. I, so you're going to say outside of Brandy Glanville, if there's a New York housewife you want to run into on the streets of Vegas, it's her. Or is it, who, would you go a little wacky or a little, a little Ramona? Well, I've met Ramona. I've met Ramona and Dorinda. Oh, wow. Not pleasant. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it would be Luann or Sonia. I just love Sonia. Sonia. I love her. Well, Creepers, my fave. you're hearing it here first. If you can give us a little bit of your energy to manifest this, it would mm-hmm. make our Vegas trip even more spectacular than it's going to be. So we'll see y'all in a week. And with that, shall we say goodbye and good luck, Stu? Goodbye and good luck, y'all. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Season one is closed. Woo! <laughs>